Well, hello, everybody. So I'm sitting here in the van. I pulled over on a little logging road off of Highway 99. I left Gibson's British Columbia on the Sunshine Coast this morning, and it wasn't. It was gray and overcast. By the time I got the ferry across to Horseshoe Bay, it was raining, and it's been raining ever since all day long. I've driven about four or five hours today. It rained the whole entire time. I'm on what's called the Sea to Sky Highway, but I never got to see the sky or the tops of the mountains. It's been in the clouds all the time. Kind of even in the, we reached into the clouds for a while. It was kind of foggy part of the ride. Windy, mountainous road. I pulled over, I stopped a little early, about 4.30, found this nice quiet logging road, decided I was going to take it easy for the rest of the day. I'm going to do a little bit of editing, I'm going to cook dinner, I'm making pesto pasta shrimp with spinach and asparagus tonight. I'm going to have enough for leftovers tomorrow, so that'll be good. I had a really nice time when I was on the sunshine coast of British Columbia, visiting my friend Barry. He's part of a hiking group, so Saturday uh, I joined a group, and there were 10 of us, went for a nice hike on Dakota Ridge, and that was really pretty, and we hiked about, oh, six, seven miles, I think, all together that day, so that was good. And yesterday, we, Barry and I went out at low tide, and went tide pooling and photographing the sea stars. So that was a nice day. A funny Side note, when I was there, um, Barry had mentioned that he'd been watching the show Manifest, and I had recorded all the latest episodes to end the series. So we kind of binge-watched a bit and watched about seven episodes over two nights there. So I have a couple more left to finish the series, so I might watch one or two tonight as well. And otherwise, I'm just kind of kicking back and taking it easy. Tomorrow I go and I meet Brenda and Jed in the little town of Clinton in British Columbia. And from there, we start heading north. Uh, once we get to Prince George, we have a decision to make because there's some wildfires burning. And our original route right now, I think, may still be closed, or the fires are at least really bad over there, and the smoke would be bad. So we're going to have to get a weather report and get some news when we get to Prince George and decide whether we're going on the Alcan Highway or taking the Cassier Highway up to Alaska. So I'll fill you in once I know the results and which way we're going to go from here. I'm out Scout Island Nature Preserve at Williams Lake in British Columbia. It's kind of interesting that it's this little marsh and you can see all around it. It's industrial and built up. We've seen white pelicans, osprey, muskrat, wood ducks, widgeons, grebes. So here I am at Scout Island. It's pretty cool, this little wilderness oasis right in the middle of this industrial and busy area. Definitely worth the stop. One of the biggest challenges here in British Columbia has been finding places to spend the night. We've been trying to find places that we didn't have to pay for. But the first night after I met Brenda and Jed, we decided to stay in a provincial park. And we stayed at Loch Lahatch Provincial Park. And it was only $18 a night, which isn't unreasonable. But if you spend 18 or $20 a night every night uh, for a couple of months, it's going to add up quite quickly. And we didn't build these great, wonderful camper vans that are self-contained. 
to have to spend our time in a campground when we don't really need one. So for our second night, we decided to scour Google Maps and see if we could find a place that we could stay. So when I'm looking on Google Maps, I'm always looking for a dirt road or something off the main highway that leads up to an area that looks like it has a clearing or a place we could park the vans. So I was scouring the Google Maps and searching all the dirt roads that went off and found one that led way up into the hills and led up to several lakes. And we noticed that it actually led to a place called Carp Lake Provincial Park. And, but be, and there was a campground in the provincial park, but I noticed right on the edge of the provincial park before you ever got to the campgrounds, there was another lake called War Lake. And it looked like there maybe was some turnouts or pullout areas that we could go into on War Lake and spend the night. So we made our turn off of the road and we drove up this dirt road for quite a ways. And we got to War Lake and we were turning off the the main dirt road into the little turnout where we thought we could camp. And it turns out they had made that into a campground as well. So we had to pay for that night too. But we had a nice stay at War Lake and it was quite pretty. So I want to share with you the latest look in Western wear, or at least Northwestern, up in British Columbia, where the mosquitoes are so bad that I actually had to sleep with my net on last night because there was one rogue mosquito inside the van that I couldn't eliminate. As I speak right now, they're kind of landing on my hands and trying to bite me. But I'm sitting up here at War Lake in British Columbia listening to the woodpeckers. I'll be quiet so maybe you can hear. So we've got woodpeckers going on. I can hear the cry of loons on the lake every once in a while. So it's pretty up here, but the bugs, the bugs rule. So we're going to head away from here today, heading further north. Not quite sure where we're going to end up, but so far it's been a fun adventure. We're going to do a little hike out to War Falls. I'm going to shake the bugs off my hands here. I didn't put bug lotion on yet today. So that's the next order of business before we start our hike. From there, we also hiked down and we saw War Falls, which were really beautiful and spend some time on that walk. So this is the new look out here in the forest in British Columbia. Full headgear, full net. You gotta be careful, the bugs are pretty ferocious. So I'm on a little walk out to War Falls and Jed and Brenda are ahead of me, but sounds like it's supposed to be a pretty nice waterfall. So we'll see what that's like when we get there. I can hear the roar of the falls. We'll go see what it looks like.
for the next night, we were looking at some places to pull over. And whenever we got to any one of them, it looked, it looked like they were part of a pipeline area and kind of had signs warning about poisonous gas in the area and stuff of that sort. So none of those places really kind of panned out that we had marked. And it was getting late. We were getting tired. We were hungry. So we ended up pulling over in a rest stop right along Highway 97. It was noisy and wasn't the greatest place to sleep, but we were beaten, we were tired, and we decided that we had to make do with that. We've also been using the app called iOverlander, trying to find places to camp. And iOverlander has been pretty good. With the iOverlander app, we also found the Musqual River Recreation Site, and we pulled in there and it looked great. We decided we wanted to spend some time there, it was really nice. It was right along the river. It had picnic tables. It had pit toilets. Everything was good. I set up the awning on the van. We were out taking pictures, walking around and I looked, turned around, and all of a sudden there was a column of smoke that I hadn't seen before and it wasn't too far away. Came back and checked all the apps and saw that it was a small fire and they thought it was contained. About two hours later, the billow of smoke got larger. We went back and checked the app. The fire had tripled in size and it was now out of control. And we had to take off because we thought we were wouldn't have been a very comfortable night's sleep worrying about that fire and the smoke coming in. Well, I'm totally bummed. We had a great campsite. We were hoping to spend two nights here. It was beautiful right by the river. We were watching a little fire that was nearby and the fire just tripled in size and went from under control to out of control. The smoke's supposed to come our way. So we decided to bug out. And I'm totally bummed because it was such a great place had the awning set up and everything and I was really looking forward to not having to drive and scramble and try to find it. Okay, so I have to hold this. So I was really hoping to uh, have a place that we could just settle down for a little bit. Now we've got to scramble and try to find somewhere else and it's getting close to dinner time and all our plans are screwed up. So I'm a little bit bummed about that. but. At least we won't be here for the smoke and the fire. So I guess it could be worse. And that's about all. I'm just bummed, totally bummed. It was such a nice place. So we used iOverlander again, and we found a little rest stop um, further up the road, about 40 minutes up the road. And there was a little note that if you pulled behind the rest stop and took a little dirt road that was bumpy at start, it led to a nice clearing. I'm going to take this one. Well, we got this place from our wonderful campsite. We ended up somewhere pretty nice. This is where we're going to spend the night. It's just starting to rain. You can hear the thunder. The lightning is crashing overhead. But we're far from the fire now. So I think we'll be good. Looks nice that way. Well, right now 
I'm cooking some salmon. Waiting for the rains to start. And making dinner. Had plans for a more elaborate dinner at the other place, but it was about dinner time and we had to get up and go. So that's what happens sometimes. But we make do. So this is it. Life on the road. Well, the rain's starting to get a little bit louder on the roof. It'll be interesting to see how hard it gets. Hopefully we're safe here. But my dinner's ready and I'm going to enjoy. Well, the rains came. Um, with the lightning, the thunder, but I'm safe and secure here in Wanderer. So I'm going to eat my dinner and ride out the storm. And that's where we are now and that's panned out quite well. But you just never know what you're going to find. And hopefully we're going to be able to use the app and gauge our places and do a little bit better. I really like to pull into our camp spots kind of early, you know, early and have dinner, maybe photograph from the camp spot. I don't like it when I have to pull into a camp spot at, late at night, scramble around, try to make dinner, find to get situated. So that's all going to take a little bit more practice, but hopefully between Google Maps an eye over lander and wherever else we can find, we're gonna get better and better at finding good campsites.